Hello Linux fans, Rob here and welcome to Linux Quest. So today we're going to review and cover uh, Linux Mint 18 and that is the KDE edition that was released today and seems like this week was uh, KDE week for me so uh, my previous video I decided to install KDE Neon and uh, use that as my daily driver and I have test machines which I can load other distributions on which is a good thing it uh, curbs my uh, distro hopping habit that I have so uh, but I'm very excited to see uh, Linux Mint release a new KDE version uh, Plasma 5 has come a long way and I want to cover this really from two different viewpoints I want to cover this and go into some things that would be I think useful for someone new to Linux uh, you know, someone who uh, they're fed up with Windows 10 uh, updates that break things and take forever and and changes their system and maybe they're ready to look at something that allows them more control and something that can be uh, a good alternative for what they're they're used to in the Windows world or Mac for that matter. So I want to cover it from that aspect but I also want to get into some of the details about what is new in KDE 18. So bear with me if you're a long time Linux user. If you've been using Linux for 20 years you're probably not watching this video anyway. So I want to try to be informative for uh, both parties. So we're going to dig into this and kind of see what's new. We'll talk about the KDE desktop environment. I've got other videos that go into a lot of details there. So if you're interested, just kind of look down through my video list in the Linux playlist. And uh, you'll find various, um, you'll find one on KDE Neon where I get into a lot of details. And that was my first video in this channel. So uh, hopefully that'll help. And with that said, let's dig right in. Okay, so here we go, Linux Mint 18 Sarah KDE Edition. And you'll notice uh, right out of the gate here the familiar KDE, or excuse me, the familiar uh, Linux Mint welcome screen. And, um, you know, this is something where just the moment you launch into Linux Mint, you see some of the detail work that Mint is known for. And Mint really, Mint is one of those distributions that has ranked extremely high in distro watch if you put a lot of credence in distro watch which I don't put everything into uh, you know the distro watch basket I certainly um, keep my eye on distro watch but just because a distribution ranks extremely high there does not mean it is the best distribution for you so bear that in mind if you're a new Linux user that is a great source you can go there and read about various distributions all of that said to say Linux Mint has ranked number one or number two for gosh a long time well over a year so um, and there's a reason behind that the the development with Mint and Mint is and I'm going to back up here for those of you who aren't aware uh, Linux Mint is based off of the stable releases long-term support releases of Ubuntu so Linux Mint 18 and we'll check out the new features here is based off of Ubuntu 1604 long-term support and because of that you have a very stable base but they go in and do things that are different in a good way and what I mean by that is for example they have their own desktop standard desktop environment which is called cinnamon now this particular version is KDE which we're, we are reviewing today and there are uh, other desktop environments that you can get with Linux Mint today but in the beginning um, their focus and their core focus today is on the cinnamon desktop so what is new in Linux Mint 18 KDE let's scroll down here and so uh, this version releases with Plasma 5.6 and the simple um, simple desktop manager uh, for the um, or display manager I'm sorry simple desktop display manager is what that SDDM stands for and um, the 5.6 release of the Plasma desktop is not the latest currently on KDE Neon it's 5.7.4 however if we scroll down here we will see that uh, the, the Mint team has included the Kbuntu backports in the PPA so what that means if you are new to Linux and just 
checking this out for the first time, is that is a source with which you can go in and update to the newer version or perhaps the latest version of Plasma Desktop. Now you still may be limited there, however, um, chances are you're not going to be jumping into a desktop version that's going to you know, break things or, or be so new that the bugs haven't been worked out. There's also been some changes, visual changes and under the hood changes to the update manager. And I'm not going to read through all of this, but I do want to mention that one of those changes is now you have a selection in the update manager to update to a newer kernel. And, um, you know, I'll equate this if you're an Arch user or Manjaro user, um, you have a setting in there, a, a kernel update setting where you can go in and update to the latest kernel if you choose. And so this is an addition here that I think is going to be welcome for a lot of Linux Mint users. And again, this page is, is uh, something you can go in and read, to, uh, read through yourself um, and, and look at all of the detailed changes. But something else to point out that's worth mention is uh, they've, they've had improvements in Linux Mint 18 for uh, high DPI screens. So a lot of new laptops and monitors are very... Uh, high resolution, high DPI uh, monitors, and Linux today kind of struggles depending on which uh, settings you have in place, what display drivers you have in place, and things like that. So that's that's a welcome change for a lot of people who have current, newer monitors and or you know laptops with high DPI screens. And so again, leave some of this for you to read into the details, but these are all welcome changes and um, let's go ahead and jump on over and go back through the welcome screen here. If you're a new user, this is one of the things that really will uh, you'll notice in Linux Mint versus some other distributions uh, has more information than just new features or documentation. Right here you'll easily be able to click on apps and most people will understand that and if you hover it'll say install additional software so you'll know hey this is where I go uh, right out of the gate here to look at look at software options the other thing that they've added here is drivers so we'll go ahead and click on that and with this particular system there should not be drivers uh, needed but we'll go ahead and update and see okay so by default here Intel Micro uh, so that that is chosen but that's it but it's nice to have that as soon as you launch in and, and look at the welcome screen. Now, Linux Mint, I'm going to say, I'm not, well, they weren't the first. However, they have been very good about um, you know, tweaking out their welcome screen and making sure that the information that needs to be there is there. And uh, that wasn't always the case uh, with Linux early on. You, you didn't really have a welcome screen that allowed you to navigate uh, from that screen. So if you're a new user, um, this is something that will allow you to jump in and, and feel your way around easier than the old days of Linux. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and close that out. Now, for people who are just interested in what Linux Mint KDE looks like, this is the default setting and, and default theme um, as you load in for the first time or as you launch in for the first time and we'll go over here to the uh, K menu for your applications. Now let me back up. I had changed that earlier to my favorite so we're going to go back over to the default application launcher. So when you first launch in this is what you will see for the application launcher. Now KDE has a very familiar interface I think for people who are used to Windows 7 or Windows 10 because you have a panel here at the bottom you have you know a clock over on the right with some other settings and then you have your menu launcher here to the left now KDE gives you some options as I said earlier this is the default and this gives you a list of categories favorites applications or main categories uh, computer history and leave leave gives you options for lock log out so on and so forth suspend hibernate shut down a full list of um, of leave related we'll call it options uh, leave power down whatever you want to call it uh, get out of here options um, in the default settings uh, or application setting now if we change that to 
what I think is a um, an application menu that is much closer to Windows 7 or Windows 10 um, and that is a simple uh, menu list okay so you have categories still but then you pop right into a a window as soon as you hover over those categories now I'm not going to spend a tremendous amount of time going through all the applications but what I am going to say is that the Mint team does a good job in picking out some key applications and and they have those pre-installed so that if you are a new user um, you'll have the majority of what you need there depending on what you're going to be using it for uh, so if, for example you you do not see games listed here so if your main goal is to load up a Linux distribution and uh, you know you're looking for games and you're looking for Steam and other things pre-installed, you you will not find that here uh, pre-installed or set up or anything. There are other de distributions that cater to that. But for the typical desktop user, which is what I believe the Mint team is always focused on, um, you've got a good selection. And then over here on the left, you will see some of those uh, favorite settings so your browser Firefox uh, your main settings menu by default your file manager uh, by default and I believe that's K notes by default or Kate let's see let's see what that is yeah Kate excuse me lost my train of thought for a minute uh, and then you have three different options here as opposed to that full list of power off features or power off options that you have so you would have log out uh, shut down log out and restart as options there but I prefer this it's very easy to navigate without a lot of jumping around and that kind of thing now you have a third option and uh, for you current Linux users who just haven't looked at KDE in a while KDE you know Plasma 5 in a while um, they have the application dashboard now if you are a GNOME desktop fan this will look familiar to you and so here, and, and I thought about another reason why this is a nice interface for uh, accessing your apps. So, you know, it launches full screen. And if you have, you know, vision problems, and hey, some of us are various stages in life where our vision's not as sharp as it used to be, um, you have a nice large selection of categories here on the left. And, uh, you know, that could be helpful for helpful for some people but also you get a nice large favorites menu over here on the on the left I said left earlier on your right are your category applications and on your left are your favorites and favorites are very easy to add here so let's say we wanted to add VLC media player we'll go ahead and right click on that and we can now add that to favorites from here but we could also add that to the panel and that panel is going to uh, have an icon here as soon as we click add to panel or you could add that to your uh, desktop so we're going to say add to panel and now to close this out you simply click anywhere on a blank space now we've got the VLC icon here on the panel now moving this icon around and let's just go ahead and I don't want to spend a tremendous amount of time on KDE because I have other videos that get into more details but we're going to go ahead and add um, Kino here which is something that I installed that wasn't pre-installed but uh, we're gonna add that to favorites and um, and then we're gonna come over here well I thought we were gonna add that to favorites and now we're gonna add that to panel so now I just want to point this out uh, for maybe someone who is experienced with Linux but they haven't spent a lot of time with KDE um, this looks like a very um, to me, this has always looked like a very simple, nice, clean interface with quick access to your icons on the bottom. And let's face it, that's very reminiscent of Windows 7 and Windows 10, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, muscle memory comes into play there for, for a new user. That would be a very familiar way to interact with launching your uh, different applications. However, what might be a little more difficult than some other Linux desktops is how you uh, alter these icons so if I wanted to remove these I can't I cannot simply right click I have to first go into panel options and panel settings now I can go in and interact with this icon so until you go into panel settings this icon is uh, is fixed 
So now we can go in and remove this icon, uh, or I could uh, click and drag and move that icon around. So, but for now, we're just going to go ahead and remove these two icons, and you'll notice a pop up as soon as you do anything with widgets. So, just kind of a quick brief overview there. We'll close those out, and you can go in and, and adjust the settings uh, for those particular pop ups. You can turn those off or on. And I'll say too to a new user uh, who maybe has no experience or very little experience with different Linux desktops, uh, KDE, especially the later version, uh, has been very stable. It has been fast. It's it's been um, it's been really a pleasure to use. And for for those of you that are following me, you know that I'm running KDE Neon as my daily driver. Uh, and I want to speak to that in just a minute. So one of the issues I found with KDE Neon is that the shutdown time can sometimes take a minute or what seems like longer than a minute. It's, it's taken so long at times that I've actually held my power button in just to turn the system off. So the first thing I did after I launched into Linux Mint uh, was the updates and then I did several reboots just to see how long it took for Linux Mint to shut off and it um, it was fine it it shut down with uh, within a reasonable amount of time and certainly uh, didn't seem to have any issues with uh, boot up times or shutdown times so just wanted to uh, interject that um, so let's let's go ahead and change I'm gonna change this back we'll change this over to application menu Simply again right clicking and go to alternatives. And we'll scroll through some of the software here. Now I've added just uh, a piece or two of software for screen recording and a couple of other things, some editing. Um, because I want to go through that. That's something that I always I try to put it through its paces uh, somewhat before really jumping in and giving sharing opinions. So um, so pre-installed under graphics, um, you had GIMP. In Gwen View and Scan Light, and again, I'm going to move through these quickly. Your default was Firefox for uh, browser and Kmail for um, you know if you needed to set up POP3 or IMAP email account. And under multimedia, you had K3B, Dragon Player, Amarok, and VLC Media Player. Office was your uh, your typical LibreOffice. And uh, under settings, you had software sources and Synaptic package managers pre-installed. Uh, you also have an upload manager pre-installed, firewall configuration. And then under system, again, we won't spend a lot of time here, uh, but you had your file manager and then driver manager, which we launched into. And uh, you also have info center. So if we launch into info center, you see again, uh, Linux Mint 18, KDE Plasma version 5.6.5, .5, and kernel version 4.4. .4. So uh, the current version is 4.7. Point something now. So, uh, but you know, they again long-term release here. This is for stability. Uh, that's what they're after with their releases. And um, under utilities, KNotes was pre-installed, Clipper and KCalc. Uh, as well as Kate, Ocular, and Spectacle. Spectacle is a, a nice um, screen clip um, manager, I'll call it. Um, does, a, does a really nice job. So, um, and then uh, Power Session with your full list of, of options here from lock all the way down to shutdown. Now, one of the things that besides the um, welcome screen that uh, Linux Mint is known for and, and you know some of this I say loosely because I you know if you look around at all of the various distributions and and all of the um, ingenuity that's gone into various distributions I am sure that somewhere along the way someone has stole something from somebody else who's then used it for something else and if you read into the forums and you see other videos and you look at multiple distributions like I do you find bits and pieces of ideas excuse me bits and pieces of software that's been uh, themed out to match that particular distribution so you see a lot of that but I wanna I guess I want to um, 
I want to say that Linux Mint has been responsible for uh, ease of use and graphically illustrating things to make the distribution easier to use for the first time user and certainly for novice users who you know are, are just ready to do away with the terminal and jump in and do things graphically and so I'm gonna say they pioneered some of that and one of the areas and again some of this is for a new user someone who is the first time maybe looking at, at Linux it's important to point these things out so the software manager And again, just the name is intuitive. You know that, okay, that's that's going to manage software. It's pretty self-explanatory. So, and, and I say that because there are other distributions who, who, um, you know, you manage the software, but there's there's nothing uh, presented in a way that would let you know that if I go into X Manager here, um, they don't use the term software or the word software. Uh, you know, it could be such and such control or and it's and it could be for a new person hard to find those things so the bit team does a nice job here their categories and they start out with featured so you're gonna see here a, a good list of uh, well-known Linux software and and so if you're new uh, I would start looking at featured and you you get brief descriptions but another thing that I'm going to credit the mint team for and I'm sure there's someone watching now who says no so and so did that five years ago and and and, and I'm sure I'm sure stuff like that happens all the time but really for me the first time that I remember seeing this type of rating system was was in Linux Mint so uh, anyway please correct me in the uh, in the comments section of the video I'm I'm sure there's lots of things I could be corrected on but to me this is a um, this is something that um, should have happened a long time ago. Um, I, I remember the first time I actually was able to install a Linux distribution and um, and get it running with drivers and things that worked with my current hardware at the time. My next hurdle was really getting in and trying to find software that I was used to running on a Windows system and that was a difficult task uh, back then uh, you know it certainly wasn't laid out like we see here with a rating system and uh, you know a lot of times you didn't find really good descriptions you had to go into the browser and, and do research and that was time-consuming so here you see a, a, a lineup and some of this for new users you're going to recognize Skype you you've heard of Skype more than likely you've heard of Thunderbird you've perhaps even used uh, GIMP because it is open source but it works on multiple uh, you know uh, operating systems so um, so this is a good place for you to start and there's also a very good rating system so if we go here to VLC and you double click you have an option here now this is already installed if it wasn't installed I would have an option here to click on install but you see a very high score and then you get to see um, you know feedback from various users reviews on the software so if you if you're an Android user or or if you have an iPhone you're used to seeing um, you know this type of setup whenever you go into your particular app store um, so this will be intuitive I think to you and I you know I think it's just gonna make sense so and the packages um, I'll, I'll just say this again if you've been using Linux a long time just kind of close your ears for just a moment here so in the Linux world uh, you'll hear the term repositories and I'm just going to try to put it in its simplest form uh, think of a repository as a filing cabinet and in each of those drawers you could have multiple folders with multiple files in those folders well the folders I'm going to say represent the repository okay and the repositories are held uh, you know offline these aren't uh, these aren't something that you will um, obtain or get access to resident on your system so just think of a remote filing cabinet with uh, lots of folders and some distributions have very few folders in their filing cabinet while other distributions 
have a large selection of folders and files in their filing cabinet. And that is the, the part that uh, equates to Linux Mint. No matter what version, it could be KDE, it could be their default Cinnamon desktop, but they have always done a good job with a, um, a good repository selection to allow you access to a lot of, of software without, that you can access graphically. You don't have to go into the terminal and uh, you know type in commands to, to install software. So if we go into Office, you're going to see a large selection there, and again, with a rating system. Just to give you an example, um, let's go into Games. So you have Wine there that will allow um, Windows games, not all games, and other Windows software to run on Linux. But uh, the games are all categorized. So again, this is just a, a shining example of of um, of Mint distributions. This doesn't again pertain just to the KDE version. You can use any desktop version of Linux Mint and and have access to this. Now the other thing that they do, since not all software is accessed through their software manager, they pre-install the Synaptic Package Manager. And so we'll just go into this quickly. And again, for you veteran Linux users, you know all about this. But this launches quickly and uh, goes right in. And this gives you the access to uh, maybe different repositories or different filing cabinets, as we discussed earlier, to uh, allow you to access uh, different software. So let's just do a quick search for Chrome. Well, what did I do wrong there? Let's hit cancel. Make sure I'm still connected. I had an issue earlier where I dropped connection. So we're going to disconnect and reconnect. So you're not, okay, no Chrome, but let's back this up. You know what? I haven't reloaded the, uh, the packages. It's the first time I've launched Synaptic. So let's go in. There we go. My bad. So um, just by typing just a few letters that are in the name of the, uh, the software that I'm looking for, it'll pull up a list. But you'll see here, if you're a new user, I recommend that you use um, the default Mint software manager because you'll get, I think, a better layout, a better description list, and sometimes inside of Synaptic Package Manager you might see what looks like redundant software um, or redundant names but they have different um, actions or features or different meanings and typically if you choose that software to install it it's going to pull in additional software that it needs to make that application run however it may be confusing if you're new to Linux. I would just suggest that you stay with the uh, the software manager. And speaking of software, the other thing that Linux Mint does during the install and first boot is it gives you an option to install codecs. And uh, I believe Mint early on used to pre-install those codecs, or it it was it was automatically installed and uh, since then they've changed that and now once you launch in you have an option to choose install codecs and these are codecs that aren't uh, free and open source and uh, that that's an option you can choose or ignore so that's up to you now I'm going to talk a little bit about the way uh, we've talked about how KDE works some we've talked about what makes Linux Mint um, unique uh, compared to other distributions uh, Linux Mint is very stable. Again, it's based off of Ubuntu, long-term support. It's got a huge following. Um, and because of that, you see typically in distributions like this, you see high quality releases. So if, if you're looking for the first time for a distribution to try, Linux Mint certainly on the list. Ubuntu uh, Mate is certainly one to look at for ease of use and stability. Um, 
what they've done here with KDE, I mean, from appearance, and this can all be changed and tweaked. KDE could be tweaked until the sun goes down. Um, I think you can go in and, and tweak it more than you'll, you'll see on any other desktop environment. Um, and I've got other videos that go into details. In, in fact, my first and second video, I, I discuss a lot of the settings in KDE and the desktop environment itself. Now, the Linux team, I've never been super impressed with their theming and, and that kind of thing. I mean, yeah, this is a, a lovely icon and it's, it's, um, you know, it's detailed and it's high quality. But if you just look at the overall theme, it's kind of blah. You know, it's it's gray. It's it's bland. If you like dark themes, uh, then you'll you'll appreciate this. This is certainly a uh, dark theme. Let's go into the file manager here. Now, when you launch into the file manager, um, it's it's different. It's more of a, a light theme. So there's a mixture there. But as far as the overall look, but again, that can be changed. There may be someone watching this who says, "Hey, man, that looks awesome," and I, hey, then 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 it'll look great for you upon first launch. Um, they did talk about having some new wallpapers. No big deal. I mean, you can get whatever wallpapers you want to get uh, online and, and add those. But I will say that once you launch into KDE, uh, it's very easy to go in and change the settings, how they're scaled. Um, you know, various, you can go into plain color, uh, pick your color. Let's see here. Some of this I've never seen. I'm, I'm not familiar with these two. Uh, but we'll go back to image. And so fairly attractive. Let's we'll choose this one and click apply. So that looks nice. Now if you want uh, a lighter taskbar and that kind of thing, we will go into settings and take a look at that. And this is part of KDE that I really appreciate. And it doesn't look like uh, the Mint team has changed anything here. This is the default uh, KDE main settings menu but it's very easy to go in and change those themes so if we wanted breeze dark to make this truly a a completely dark theme you can see how that all changed so that's all we're going to click apply and now we're going to switch over to desktop theme and let's see what we have there so we do have a Linux Mint and how that differs from breeze dark you know you can go in and apply that I'm not going to do all of that here but if you did want a lighter theme you can simply choose breeze light and click apply and so now we're going to have a white uh, taskbar. So, and kind of a transparent background here. Um, and then the other thing that you'll see in other videos that, that I have posted about KDE, uh, I'm a big fan of the Dolphin File Manager. And, um, maybe something that I haven't mentioned before about the Dolphin File Manager. Uh, you can go into Control and Configure and this might be for, uh, this will be good for first time users and people who maybe just are long time Linux users but you aren't familiar with uh, Dolphin. Besides your typical split view and editable location, not editable as in I can eat it, but editable <laughs> location bar um, you know you can show the full path inside then you can go in and change your view modes and bump up the icon size you saw, saw that happen there um, services so you can go in to um, again control and then into the settings and you can turn various things off and on that allow you to interact with the file manager in a different way so I'm a, a one of my pet peeves is I want an instant delete button so we're going to turn that on. Um, you can toggle on or off copy to and move to commands if you wanted to. Uh, you've got compress, extract, open as root, that's a good one to have. But the other thing that you can do is you can download new services. Now these new services are set up by different ratings or you can, uh, excuse me, you can order these by newest, by rating, by most downloads and uh, installed and I highly recommend anytime you're installing something in KDE where you have this ratings menu definitely go through and, and check it out because it does uh, give you a completely new menu list uh, once you choose a new setting there so if we go to rating for example uh, now you've got it you could install a Dropbox service menu that's very handy 
Uh, you could install a root actions uh, service menu. Again, very handy to have there. Uh, extract and compress KDE4. So that wouldn't apply here, I don't believe. Here we go. KDE service menu with PDF. Various KDE service menus for PDF documents. So if you work with, you can convert uh, to PDF documents. So if PDF is something you work with a lot, that's an action menu you can install. So I found this to be, um, you know, one of those things in Linux that it's uh, once you discover it, it's a pleasant surprise, and you go, "Yeah, that's that's great to see. We need more stuff like that." So I uh, just wanted to point that out real quick. And for the most part, it looks like nothing's really um, different here. It doesn't look like Mint has done anything with the uh, file manager. It's a standard KDE file manager. I also I was <laughs> surprised in the beta. I did a beta review about three weeks ago, and uh, I, my my suspicion was is that the KDE or excuse me that the Mint team would uh, put put their own little icon there, and uh, but they did not. They chose not to. So, um, you know, I haven't spent a lot of time with this. So, you know, call this an overview. I, I kind of wanted to do a mixture um, for people who are new or interested in Linux. You know. Would I jump right into KDE Plasma 5 for my de first desktop environment? I really would not hesitate. And the reason is, while there are a tremendous number of settings and tweaks and things that you can do, my experience has been, at least over the last few months, that KDE Plasma 5 and its current versions from, I'm going to say about 5.4 up, has been stable. Um, it's a, a light filling distribution and I believe too that someone from Windows um, coming to KDE with this particular setup would have an easy time navigating around and just would appreciate the muscle memory aspect of using KDE 5. Now, experienced Linux users I think would also appreciate KDE 5 uh, or Plasma 5 because of all of those deep detailed settings that you can get into so if you're that type of person and you haven't you know tried a distribution with KDE yet I think you would enjoy uh, digging into those details and and uh, you know try to break it um, there's some other things built into KDE that don't necessarily apply to Linux Mint and uh, that would be desktop widgets so you could go in and simply right click and add various widgets you could throw a clock up there and again I cover a lot of this um, in some other videos but maybe this is the first time you're getting a look at uh, KDE you throw a puzzle up there and maybe you're saying wow those are kinda large and we'll throw a note up there so these are all configurable so again, if you're a longtime Linux user or maybe you're using KDE now, this will not be new to you. But if you're a new user, let's go ahead. You can simply left click and pause or hold. And now you get a menu that allows you to enlarge or minimize the um, widget. And then you'll have settings in there where you could go in and change colors. Click apply there. So you could do that as well with this puzzle game that looks like it's already launched so I'm failing on this game already we'll go ahead and close that out and then you have a, um, a widget for a clock here that could be a digital clock there's widgets for digital analog and uh, you know you can get really crazy with the clock it's always fun so we'll close that out there's settings here for your little pop-up so you can control whether that pop-up appears or not or you can I believe change the amount of time that that setting shows up now let's go ahead back to the taskbar so over here you have a clock setting and we would go in the default is 24 hours but just to give you an example of some of the detailed settings we can change that to bold choose the font uh, change the uh, text you cannot do this detailed setting in a lot of distribution desktop environments so um, you know and and I get it um, some people just want a clock to show up as long as the clock works they're fine other people enjoy getting in there and tweaking things out perhaps we want to show the date 
to we can click apply and now we have a date um, you know maybe you want the 24 hour clock so no problem bold text and then you have your uh, wireless internet settings here and I like the large um, format here you, you see all of the information and uh, you know and it's laid out fairly well then volume controls or that's left click or right click and you go into audio volume settings so there you could set up for recording for output input devices so if you plug in a headset or something or a cam uh, a webcam or something like that you can go in and and uh, get into deeper settings there so has the mint team done a good job absolutely um, is this one and again I don't have a rating system if you watch my other videos um, you know I, I don't particularly uh, get into rating a, a system for try or don't try or you know I just kind of share my opinion and my opinion with uh, Linux Mint is that uh, it's certainly uh, one to check out if you're uh, trying something new or if you're new to Linux I wouldn't hesitate to try this one or um, you know some other version of Linux Mint 18 you're gonna have a stable base you're gonna have a large selection of software to choose from you're gonna have things set up in a set up in a way that allows you to go in and easily um, set the system up for the first time um, you know and I just as I see this now so they have thoughtful software this should be installed by default in all distributions and I say that but yet um, KDE Neon is such a bare system that this wasn't installed but that was okay for me uh, but for someone new it's nice to have USB image writer and stick formatter pre-installed so um, definitely I would say put Linux Mint 18 on your list whether that is the KDE desktop environment or whether that is the default cinnamon desktop environment uh, I think you'll have a stable system I think it'll be a good system for you as a new user to learn off of or perhaps you're an existing user who's just you know uh, tired of the terminal uh, you know you're tired of te typing out all of your terminal commands and you're ready to uh, just kind of use a more basic uh, graphical user interface system then this would be a good option because the Mint team has put a lot of time and focus on uh, the graphic user interface and allowing you to to do everything you know graphically so um, anyway if you were playing a uh, um, a game or um, or anything or if you were planning on playing a lot of games when you launch into uh, this particular distribution I would say that's the only area where you will be uh, lacking somewhat because as you see there just aren't now there's access to plenty of games but it's really set up for more of a, a daily desktop user who's going to jump in and use the web use some office software perhaps but maybe you do um, you know a lot of your work online through uh, you know Google Apps or something like that but you need image editing and you know and things like that so you'll have a, a good selection to start off with and I am sure uh, there will be some questions if you're new and you have questions about this particular distribution or I'm sure that I've missed something that someone who's an experienced user says I can't believe you didn't talk about this please share that in the uh, video comments because that's what this is about um, you know I do this for fun but I also want it to be informative because um, you know my excitement for Linux hasn't changed and uh, the reason is there's always something new on the horizon and there's always something being developed and there's always innovation and I, I see it with distributions I see things that um, that really surprise me sometimes and then I see things where I think well it's kind of status quo but but that's the Linux world and, and if you get involved in, in Linux and and you get involved in the community you're going to find people that will support you and help you uh, you can jump into forums you'll find lots of other videos there there are folks that are doing some just phenomenal videos way beyond what I'm doing here but um, so you can get as deep as you need to get and uh, and to me that's all exciting if you're learning and there's there's new things there and and there's a community behind it to me that's 
that's a fun thing. So anyway, give it a try. I would not hesitate to use Linux Mint 18 at all. Hope this helps, and we will check you next time.